the African subcontinent continues to receive much attention from the international community as it strives toward economic development and integration. The Southern African countries and SADC feel compelled to promote regional economic development and integration. Geographical indications are a mechanism that might be able to incentivize this effort. A geographical indication is a sign used on products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin. A new EPA between SEDEC and the European Union has recently come into effect. The EPA provides significant benefits to South Africa and the EU on the protection of GI names. However, I would like to speak in a broader sense. Rooibos tea, originating from the Western Cape of South Africa, the Khoi and San people were the original harvesters and consumers of rooibos tea. The traditional knowledge that they have gained throughout the centuries is still used in modern cultivation. Properties of the plant are a direct result of the unique geographical conditions in which it grows. There is a strong link between Noivos and the farmers who grow it as they have traditional knowledge on the correct way to cultivate and produce it. Large plantations make up 95% of the total pop production. The remaining percentage is produced by local cooperatives. These smaller cooperatives do not cultivate rooibos, but use their traditional knowledge to harvest it from wild plants. The hope really is for GIs to be a point of leverage. Diversification into high value products can be pursued. GIs can be used as a brand to underpin this value. The preservation of rural employment is another promising factor, slowing the drift of rural workers to urban centers. Rural industries preserve rural landscapes, which in turn supports tourism. Take for example the sugar landscapes in Mauritius, the tea landscapes in Kenya, and the clove landscapes in Zanzibar and Pemba. Zanzibar cloves. Introduced in Zanzibar from Mauritius in 1918, the Zanzibar clove has a unique aroma compared with the clove products of other countries, which make it particularly appealing to consumers for cooking and to produce essential oils. It is described as bittersweet. Clove exports account for up to 70% of Zanzibar's export earnings. However, various market factors have resulted in a decline of this sector. The development of GIs is being explored as part of a strategy to arrest this decline. Much research remains to be done on the underlying economic impact of geographical indications, especially in the developing context. Different dimensions of geographical indications are closely embedded within the various legal and institutional frameworks. Marsden, in his 2012 paper, states that geography is at the heart of geographical indications. This geographically intertwined nature of geographical indications has certain implications for the organization and control of origin labeled products. Demerara sugar from Mauritius is a traditional unrefined sugar produced to have a larger and crunchier crystal than granulated sugar. It is a dry, coarse textured amber sugar that has a toffee-like flavor. Mauritius has pointed out that if they were to liberalize in the area of agriculture, it possibly could not do so in a simple manner. The question is one of possessing the competitive capacity to survive in a liberalized world. Geographical indications could possibly provide Mauritius with a niche market for one or two small products. The question and the question of the region 
is what structures are necessary to harness this opportunity. Strong organizational and institutional structures to maintain, market and to monitor. Equitable participation among the producers and enterprises in a GI region. Sharing reasonably in costs as well as benefits. benefits. Also in control and decisions. Strong market partners. Successes are the result of mutually beneficial business relations. Effective legal protection. Carefully chosen options. Effective monitoring and enforcement. The way forward is really in the fundamentals. I would like to conclude my presentation with a recipe for Karoo lamb chops about how to prepare and eat them. Karoo lambs are very cute. They are also very delicious. You will only require three ingredients for this recipe. Well, four ingredients if you consider the smoke and heat from the searing hot coals. The ingredients you require are lamb chops, salt and pepper. Chops cut from the shoulder or from the rack are recommended. You will need about 3 kilograms of lamb meat. This will be enough to feed about 2 people and a dog. Cook over blisteringly hot coals until the meat develops a deliciously seared crust. You do not require a plate. Eat the meat directly from the fire. It is rumored that the late great Nelson Mandela was conceived after a meal such as this.